Mr. Krishner, uh, you have uh, had a Kundalini experience. I, yeah. I wish you could explain what a Kundalini experience is and what its ramifications are. Before I start to describe my own experience, perhaps it would be better to give a little detail about what Kundalini means. We are not using the totality of the human brain. According to various estimates, most of us use only 10 percent of the brain and according to some only 8 percent. That means 90 percent of the brain is unutilized. That is, there is still a large margin in the brain which could be used for other purposes and nature has provided it for certain purposes which are not yet known to science. According to the Indian tradition, there is a region in the brain below the crown and above the palate which is called Brahmarindra or the cavity, cavity of Brahman. This region can be activated by certain disciplines and when activated it can give to the individual the same vision of the universe which all great mystics of the earth have described. When it is awakened the normal energy of the body or the blood is not able to fuel the center. It needs a more powerful and concentrated psychic fuel. This fuel comes from the reproductive system which is transformed into a kind of radiation and that radiation uh, awakens and makes the center to function. In my case, the awakening occurred at the age of 34 in 1937. I had been meditating for 70. You can keep on talking. Keep on, the camera's rolling. Yeah. For 17 years and then all of a sudden during Christmas while I was sitting cross-legged in a state of meditation a strange thing happened. Something exploded in my brain and a current of silvery light rising through my uh, spine irradiated my whole brain and I felt myself expanding in all directions. This expansion was so incredible, so amazing that I thought that something unusual had happened in my interior. After this I had two other experiences of the same kind after short intervals and after that it ceased. But something was changing in me and I could perceive this change for many, many years, day and night. In fact, I pra passed through grave crisis during that period. Finally, I became stabilized in that condition of consciousness in my, uh, I should say, 49th year. Since that time, 
I am living in that condition. That is, before my thirty-fourth year, I was living in this world, thinking, seeing, perceiving in the same way as other people do. But since my forty-ninth year, I am living in two different worlds. One is the normal world of senses and the reason. The other is the world which is much higher, much more happy, and which is totally against, apart from anything that we can know of the earth. It is the world of consciousness. How do you see the world? In, in, in auras or lights? In the normal state, we see light and shade, colors, shape, and size. Also, we hear We know what all people perceive of this world. I can understand what you perceive of it. You can understand what I perceive of it. That is, this person perception is uniform. Everyone has the same perception. But this other perception is different. In this perception, you do not see the world as a solid, real, objective creation. The real objective creation is consciousness. You see consciousness everywhere. You see the ocean as if it is living. You see a mountain as if it is living. You see the sky as if it is living. You see the earth as if it is living. You see life or consciousness everywhere. And this life, or consciousness, is not something which is dead or which is something which you can really understand. It is unfathomable, it is a wonder, and every time you see it, you perceive it, the wonder grows deeper. We, I am never tired of sitting in quiet, and reflecting on myself. I am never tired at looking on the sky. The sky to me does not appear as it appeared before my thirty-fourth year. It is so fascinating. It is such a beautiful vision that I would like to look at it for days and months on end. In other words, in the interior, a fount of happiness, a new kingdom, I should say, is opened. This is probably what Christ meant, the kingdom of heaven is in you. This is the nirvana of Buddha. This is the Brahman of the Upanishads. And this is the state of Vedat mentioned by the Sufi mystics. In fact, in this unity state, what we perceive is, cons is consciousness in its majestic form, in its glorious form, and not consciousness as a point looking through the eyes or hearing through the ears, but a consciousness which has its own channels and which knows that it is the master and not the slave of the, of the material forces, which knows that it is the creator. It is infinite. It is uh, deathless. That is, uh, one, instead of being a pygmy in this state, feels himself to be a king.
feels himself to be the master of what he sees. It is not the ego, I should say. It is not the ego. It is the very condition of this consciousness. That is the reason why it is said that no mystic would change his state even for a kingdom. It is something so unique, so glorious, so elevating that I have no words to describe this state. What type of life must a person live to awaken their Kundalini? In order to make this clear, I would like to say that it is not Kundalini. Kundalini is the power, the mechanism. But actually, what we do is awaken to activity a certain region in the brain. This means that nature has already provided a potential in the brain which has to be awakened. This means that the brain can still organically evolve to a higher performance. This is my experience that the human brain is still organically evolving in the direction of the great mystics, in the same direction as the great geniuses and the great mystics had. Now for this evolution a certain type of life is necessary. For instance, throughout our life this evolution is resistlessly going on and we have to cooperate with it. Where we do not cooperate with the inner evolution, we create problems for ourselves. For that purpose, for the last 5,000 years at least, great prophets have been born, beginning with the Vedas, then Buddha, then Christ, then Muhammad, then Guru Nanak, and all the ancient prophets of the Bible. They have been born time after time, and they have given some teaching to mankind which was, in other words, a direction for how to live while the brain is evolving. The Sermon on the Mayam, the Ten Commandments, the Discourses of the Buddha, the Bhagavad Gita, and all those directions contained in the religious scriptures of the earth. I mean the basic tenets, they are all meant to regulate our life so as to live in harmony with the law of evolution which governs our lives. This is the secret, this is the secret of why there is religious revelation. You cannot believe that the creator of the universe, which has billions upon billions of suns, billions of billions upon billions upon billions of earths, and which is still so vast that our puny intellect cannot even uh, grasp its magnitude, should wish that we should praise him. That is not the case. The revelations have come to re regulate the life of human beings so that they work in harmony with the law of evolution that is at work day and night in their brains. Where they depart from this law of evolution, they always bring calamities or problems upon themselves. The present period is one such occasion when we have digressed from the laws of evolution and the result is that we are threatened in many directions. So, uh, the life to be led is just as you see in the Sermon of the Mount. A life of humility, a life of love, a life of purity, a life in which you wish for others what you wish for yourself, a life in which you are pure, you are not sophisticated, you are not over clever, you are not smart, you do not wish by your cleverness or smartness to take what belongs to the other, a life of extreme purity. 
and a life of simplicity that you do not waste the resources of the earth as you know every animal satisfies his ba- basic needs from the cyclic resources of the earth man is the only creature who is wasting the basic resources the minerals for his own luxury and pleasure that is what the sermon on the mount is meant to teach that man that humanity should live simple beautiful pure compassionate lives this is the type of life necessary for the awakening of kumar uh, and this is what all religions of the world every prophet every great mystic even every philosopher for instance see socrates or plato or shankaracharya you will find that this life of uh, purity compassion love service is the ideal life which mankind or which human beings have to live okay uh, there is no change in consciousness in birth or death could you explain that yeah here we come to metaphysics now it is like this we see the sun rising in the morning and setting in the evening actually is there any change in the sun the same is true of consciousness consciousness is eternal our souls they are eternal immutable omniscient omnipresent omnipotent and our spark partakes of the same nature as the divine so there can be no death for this no change for this the change occurs in our sheath mind intellect uh, the senses but not in the essence the principle which is conscious the more we use our mind the greater our uh, development of uh, of of evolution takes place uh, this development of evolution without uh, conscious spiritual awareness is the reason for uh, the present situation the human brain is evolving rapidly because from morning till evening we are applying our brain to some task we are reading we are looking through the newspapers we are watching the television we are reading some book or we are working in the office most of the people are applying their brain throughout the day this was not the case before when people hunted or when they were tilling the soil they had no need to apply their brain so concentratedly we are now applying our brain in a very concentrated form from morning till night in other words we are concentrating we are meditating though on material objects the result is a rapid state of evolution with this rapid state of evolution our way of life must change but we have not changed it on the other hand we have made our living and our life more and more complex and intricate so that all the day we are working and working and working to feed our belly to live we are giving no time to the mind we are giving no time to the spirit we are not giving any thought to it the result is that there is a disproportionate evolution we have developed a very powerful intellect as is seen by the scientific discoveries that have been made and the change that has occurred in our life but on the other hand our spiritual and moral growth has been negligible so what we have in modern times is a disproportionate human being a joint of intellect on the one hand and a pygmy of moral or spiritual stature this disproportion is the at the base of the present threatening situation of the world. what can we do to remedy that what we can do is 
to make a thorough research on all the revealed scriptures of mankind, on all the occult traditions of the past, and to make experiments on the brain. In fact, yoga was devised in India to make experiments on the brain. Yoga, the very word yoga means to yoke, to join, to join the individual soul with the oversoul, with the, with the divine consciousness. It is the very meaning. And yoga was devised after an experience of civilized life extending to over 2,000 years. The methods of yoga, from the very first, there are eight steps, and the very first two steps are to lead the life as prescribed in the Sermon on the Mount, a life of love, of humility, of, of service, of regularity, of moderation. Nothing is denied. You have not to be an anchorite, you have not to be an ascetic, but you have to live like a human being with moderation, with temperance, not to imbibe poisons, as we do. So it is this type of life which has to be led. But since the race, instead of leading the life that is in conformity to the evolutionary processes, is leading the very opposite life, a life of luxury, life of prodigality, of wastage of the Earth's resources, of pollution, creating a pollution around the planet. So nature's forces are now creating a situation in which uh, either calamities occur, which will change the direction of human life, or by their own sensible reaction they will change it themselves. Change has to occur in any case. And the research of this force is the most urgent task of it our time. It is the most urgent. I have been saying it after observing my own state for at least 30 years. For 30 years I said nothing because I wanted to confirm that my experience was real experience and not a delusion and that it is corroborated by ancient traditions. I made a study of those traditions and I found that my experience is in conformity to the ancient tradition. After that I wrote my first book. And now in my eightieth year I solemnly say that this and this alone is the answer to modern crisis. The, the answer is like this because for the first time you know that the brain is evolving. At present science doesn't know it. it is, there is complete darkness about it because you cannot see this ev evolution of the brain by external observation. You can then see only neurons and their connections. It has to be seen from internal observation by awakening this power. When this power is awakened, then you are able to observe the internal working of the brain. And that shows you that you are still awake, uh, evolving. What do you propose? How do we investigate this? I think any sane government, any good government, should first make research on the brain, the nervous system, the ancient religious traditions, the ancient occult tradition. After all, we have to understand that religion has been always a companion of man. We have evidence that man was rel religious even 200,000 years ago. The first relics found in Central Africa show that, that those, even those people were performing religious ritual. So it means religion has been always a part of human life. Why? What research have we made on? We have made research on psychic phenomena, but no research on religious traditions and religious experience. That is the reason for the present, I should say, tragic situation. We have made no... Ex no and were we to devote as much time and resources as we devote to other scientific experiments, even to ex exploration of space, 
I think the results would be a hundredfold more precious than, than the results of those investigations. And there were results which represent, which prove? The results will show, I can tell you in a brief word, the results will show that the human brain is still organically evolving, that certain lifestyles, certain ways of, uh, certain ways of behavior and, uh, are necessary to live in conformity to the inner changes, and that religion came in time to guide mankind on this spot. And it is this path that will lead us to uh, the stars? It is our purpose to... It will lead humanity to this new dimension of consciousness. It will lead humanity to the goal which nature has assigned for her. It will lead humanity to a peaceful coexistence to happiness, to long life, to much greater achievements than, she's, than she has done even now. And probably also it may need, lead her to an exploration of the universe, to know more about the universe than she can do otherwise. How will this affect the political structure? How this will affect? The, polit the policies of governments, what will it, the ramifications? You see, I need not say it. The experiments will show what kind of life and what kind of an environment a human being must have to evolve completely in harmony with the, with, with the law of evolution. It will be, there will be more freedom. And uh, I believe that that things that things ha I believe that things happen not by chance but purpose. There is a purpose to our life. There is a purpose to our existence. Now, please tell me. Can such a vast creation be purposeless? Can such a vast creation come out of nothing? Can such a vast creation ruled by laws be all composed of dead, insentient matter? The very idea of being, of existence, comes from the mind. A rock or a mountain or an ocean has no idea of existence. Hence existence comes from intelligence. The author of the universe must be intelligent. If we have an intelligent creator, there can be, it can never be that there is no purpose in all this uh, universe. There must be a purpose. And if there is no purpose in creation, how have we come to have purpose in ourselves? We do everything with a purpose. How has this purpose come? If there is no purpose in creation, how do we act on purpose? So it means purpose and plan is a part of consciousness. The very fact we build nuclear weapons is spiting nature's wrath. You've said that nature is very merciful, and nature will use the least amount of uh, uh, strength yeah. to uh, put us back on the proper path. Can you elaborate on that, please? Unless nature were merciful, how would we be here? You see, this earth, Inside the earth you have fire. It is a volcano inside, a burning inferno. And outside the earth
Now, inside the earth, you have fire. Outside the earth, you have fire. You have cosmic rays coming, for which you have an umbrella, known as heaviside layer, at 50 miles from the earth. If you didn't have this heaviside layer, there would be total destruction of all life in a short time. We are so protected that even one single slip or error can destroy the whole of life on earth. If nature were not merciful, how could we live? The very fact that we are alive and we are able and that all these hazards around us are controlled by other powers, it means that nature is merciful and kind. And that even though we are building nuclear weapons that are spiting nature, that nature will be merciful in our... It gives us chance after chance. Just as we overeat and go on overeating, many, many times nature forgives us. But when we indulge too much in this bad habit, then one day we have a severe pain in our digestive organs. Similarly in other things. We have great reserves in our body which help us when we depart from laws of hygiene or laws of health. So the nature is very merciful in these things. But when we overdo a thing, the naturally disaster overtakes us. So we cannot blame nature but our own selves. We have an intelligence, we have reason, we have, we have learning, but if uh, having everything we ignore, then of course nature has no alternative except teaching us by suffering. For instance, sixteen civilizations have perished so far. And we are not even aware what reasons prevailed that made those civilizations at the height of power to mingle with the dust. The reason is that at every stage of progress the life of man has to change. For instance, a child grows up. He has, he lives one kind of a life when he is infant. Another kind when he is a child, his tastes, his activities change. Then he has other tastes and activities when he is an adolescent, then further when he is an adult, then when he is mature, and last of all when he is old. At every stage he has different tastes, different activities, different ways of life. The same is the case with nations and people. They have to change at every stage in their development. For instance, uh, we have, there was once, there were feudal systems. Before that there were clans, tribes, or monarchy, but now we have democracy. So even the systems of our government are changing. Why? Because our brain is evolving. But when we stop changing, uh, living according to the laws of our evolution, we deteriorate and degenerate. This is also happening at present. So if a man wants to go into his room and hang himself, no one could stop him, and this is what we're doing by building nuclear weapons? Yeah. When we deviate from the path, we invite suffering and disaster for ourselves. There are even devices in our own brain, there are devices in consciousness which when we digress we invite a calamity or a disaster. Mm -hmm. What's to stop a, a, an insane leader from blowing up the earth? What? Yeah. Yes, for instance we are devising nuclear weapons. There is no sense in that. 
War can be fought even without nuclear weapons, but we are devising these weapons to punish ourselves. So what is the hope? Where does the hope come from? What, what hope do we have that we won't destroy ourselves? Heaven is always merciful. If we analyze the cause of our present dilemma and crisis and try to change that, try to live more in harmony with the laws of evolution, the, this threat will be averted. But if we continue like this, there is no chance. We must suffer. What would you tell the leaders of the world? What do the leaders of the world have to know today? The leaders of the world have to be convinced, and for that conviction, experiment is necessary. The analyzation of Kundalini energy, of the brain. Of the brain. Brain. We can keep the name aside. The brain, we have to show that the brain is evolving and that this evolution needs a certain kind of harmonious life. If this life is denied, then man degenerates and brings calamities upon himself. You have the Kundalini Research Foundation in Canada and Switzerland. I wonder if you can explain to the public what that is. And yeah, what that it means. can be started anywhere and it would be good if it is started at many places. The United States also can provide a beautiful environment for this uh, experiment. You propose taking a hundred people and... For experiment, a hundred people will be needed. But for uh, running the organization, we can have any number. And these hundred people will live a life prescribed and hopefully out of this hundred... People who have a deep passion for spiritual matters and who are prepared to mold their lives in consonance with the spiritual laws would be more welcome in this organization. And out of the hundred, maybe four people will have yeah, yeah. Out of a hundred to whom the disciplines are given, maybe three, two, four may show these symptoms after some time, which scientists can observe. The cis these would be, uh, what, 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 would, what would examples of this be? What? Examples of these four or three, how would they, what would they react to, how would they, what, what, what would what would actually happen to them? What will happen is that the brain activity will be increased and its effect will be found all on the body. There will be, there will be metabolic processes which can be measured. There will be physiological changes which can be measured. And the effect of this will be on the world? They will convince the biologists that, that uh, this change uh, of the mind, this change of the brain has physiological uh, symptoms. On the other side, this man, I mean those in whom these processes start, may bloom into a genius, may bloom into a mystic. So there will be both sides will be con confirmed that it is the evolution of the brain that creates a mystic or a genius. And these are the same mystics and genius all throughout time. So we would study the past yeah. and we will try to create is, it in the future. That is what will be done. For the first time, we will study the religious and occult literature of the world with an aim to find how the brain evolves and what methods are needed to, uh, to make it more active so that the evolutionary processes uh, become faster and some results are obtained in a short time. So in effect, this will be the spearhead of a new race of human beings to prove that all human beings have it this ability. It will be ability. a spearhead of many things. It will be a spearhead 
of changes in the social and political system. It will be a spearhead of, for the first time, bringing to the notice of the race that there are, there is a potential in every human being which is the most precious asset that he has and which can transform him into a mortal, into an immortal and eternal uh, uh, source of happiness. Is this what evolution has meant for humanity's destiny and it is inevitable for this to take place? Beg pardon? Is, is, is this what evolution has meant for humanity? That humanity will evolve to a higher state of consciousness eventually? Man has come for this purpose. Otherwise, please consider it for a moment. One whole planet, the earth, and all its kingdom, mineral, animal, and everything is placed at his disposal. Why? Because man has to attain to other states of consciousness for which all these resources are needed by him. Otherwise, if it is a planned creation, it would be useless to put all this at his disposal if he has nothing to do, only to live like animals. It is because he has to reach to higher dimensions of consciousness that all this earth and all its resources have been placed at his disposal and he has been granted an intelligence to make the best use of it. Uh, strong love from birth, a strong mother and father, a strong loving environment, a strong culture will help develop this? At the I can't say strong, but I can say that a more harmonious, more peaceful, more happy, more contented humanity will come out of this. And then in every generation there will be some people who have reached the higher dimension. They will be the rulers, political leaders, scientists and educationists. They will guide the race to rise higher and higher and higher. And we don't have a spiritual leader of that magnitude today. At this time we do not have, but they will come, they will be born when experiments are made and what I say is confirmed. What's your wish for the children of the future? What type of, the, the children that are born, what type of life are they going to have? The, the children, the young, young children. Children should be brought up with the idea inculcated in them that the universe is ruled by an intelligent power and that they must cultivate purity, honesty, truth, compassion and live ideal lives. In that way they will conform to the evolutionary needs. That is the best thing we can do for the children. How can we uh, help the people today that have been lost to drugs and have, have killed people that are in jails? What, what can we tell them? What do they need to hear? When you place before them an alternative, that in their own interior there is a mine of happiness, an ocean of eternal life, and prove it, they will take that part. You must show them a better incentive. What, what do we need to evolve? What do we physically need? A good, a moderate food, uh, lifestyle, uh, in inputs? I mean, how can we affect our evolutionary process to the best uh, possibility? We need healthy food simple dress, a clean shelter and a hygienic shelter, a, a wholesome occupation, education for our children to have the highest happiness on the earth. Happiness comes from the mind, not from the body. 
A man may have all the luxuries, but he may have his mind might be depressed. He will never be happy. It is the mind that gives us a peasant, a poor farmer, eating just a bread with a little salt, sometimes has a better appetite and eats, eats it with more relish than a rich man or a man who is living in luxury eats his fruits and his, all his delicious fruits. Nature is very, very wise in this. I have seen people living hardy lives who eat with such an appetite simple foods that one likes, that one would eat with them. Is uh, the biological basis of schizophrenic, manic depression, and genius, and Kundalini uh, spiritual awareness they all? Are, they are interrelated. Ha elaborate, please. You see, if we do not live a disciplined life, then the awakening of the center can be unhealthy. We know that many of the geniuses, perhaps most of them, have been mentally unhealthy, had one mental disorder or the other. This is due to the fact that they did not know how they had to live. Similarly, we have in schizophrenia, many people who think they are poets, some who think they are spiritual geniuses, some who think they are in touch with God. That means a distorted vision of the same power. It means that the, their kundalini, if that's the right word, uh, is off balance, is, isn't, yeah, isn't it means being that, treated. It means that the system is not pure and that the energy is not working in a healthy way, it means that. Do you feel that there are other life forms beyond our life, sec secular existence? Are there in the universe? There can be, in the universe, there can be different species of life, more intelligent than we are. It is a vast place and there can be thousands of species, different and more intelligent than we. Do you believe they have ever come visited the earth or made contacts or are psychically in contact with uh, uh, I think spirit? we should first make the experiments before we yeah go and on. then we can ourselves understand where the experiment will lead mm -hmm. I don't wish to say anything which I cannot substantiate by proof so I am sticking to this that we should first see that the brain is evolving, which I have personally experienced, and that mystical experience is possible with these experiments, that genius is also a part of this energy. These three things are so important that our whole attention should be directed to proving this first. Mm -hmm. And the black magic, occult foolishness is just that. We, it at no this purpose. time, we need not go beyond this. Let us first prove the first steps. Then there will be others who will, who will be initiated, who will know these things. We can then see what they will do. Because at our state of consciousness, we can't even comprehend what that might be. What, 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 uh, can be said. How, can you please recite the last verse in uh, the present crisis? The, the last poem, the mm. last line, do you, you have it? it? It says, in the time, you have it memorized, what, what does it say? The last, this is, uh, the hope is never near human hearts, and blank despair is nearer the only course for those. Uh, you see, this is written to make people understand that heaven is not vindictive that heaven is compassionate and merciful and that if we continue to transgress only as much suffering will be inflicted as is absolutely necessary to put us right. 
Therefore, we need not fear that there will be an annihilation. It is like a child. If you have a child, you will never like to harm the child, but you give him a blow on the face to, to cure him of bad habits. That is what nature will do. Thank you very, very much.